Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at another book by Marcelo de Celeste, Angola Jenga, Kingdom of Runaway Slaves. As far as content notes go, this is another book about the resistance of black people who had escaped from enslavement from and continued to resist Portuguese and Dutch enslavers slash colonizers in Brazil. Some characters are infants. There is a lot of violent content, but it's not very graphic. There is also a lot of unsexual shirtlessness across sexes. If you want to see my review of his previously translated book, Run For It, I'll link that in the cards. But since I didn't do a proper creator profile in that review, I'll be including that here. According to Goodreads and translated by Google, Deslash is an author of comic books and a professor of visual arts of Escola de Aplicacayo. Apologies for mangling that. A public institution of elementary and high school education at the Museum of Contemporary Art at USP. But here we will take a brief aside, as I've been doing with all of my black comic creator reviews. I am also highlighting different black booktubers. Today's pick is Ghost Reader. Thinking about his channel, I correctly or incorrectly strongly associate it with historical stuff and even more specifically, military history. So link in the cards and or below, go subscribe. Flipping back to Angola Jenga, Kingdom of Runaway Slaves, and looking at the back of the book, quote, founded in late 16th century Brazil, Angola Jenga was a beacon of freedom. For over a hundred years, this community of runaway slaves thrived in fierce opposition to the Dutch and Portuguese colonial powers. In the stunning follow-up to his critically acclaimed graphic novel debut, Run For It, Deslesh brings the history of this precarious kingdom to life. The painful stories of fugitives, the brutal raids by colonial forces, and the tense power struggles among the inhabitants. At turns empowering and heartbreaking, Angola Jenga is a stark reminder that the fight for justice is an eternal battle." End quote. Another historical fiction based off of a lot of research, a number of place names get thrown around in ways that I initially found somewhat confusing. That said, there are more than a few maps in the back that really give you context to the book. There's also a chronology of the Palmares War, a list of references, and the end papers show the characters next to their names. Each section also opens with a translation of people writing during this time period about black people. So this book definitely gets top marks for supporting material, which is so very rare. Deslush's art style is also something that keeps bringing me back to his books. I feel like a bit of a minority opinion on this, but I actually really enjoy stark black and white art in general. And there's more than a few books in color I think would be greatly improved by just stripping out the color. My flip through probably shows you how thick this book is, which might be intimidating, but I actually was able to get through this book in a fairly speedy manner because it's not very word heavy and there's lots of visual storytelling going on, something I think shows a lot of skill. The page layouts are varied but very cubic and straightforward to follow. As far as gender and sexuality goes, you may, for some strange reason, remember that my main hang-up for Marcelo de Slash's other title, Run For It, was that each of the short stories in the collection involved fridging black women. Obviously not unrealistic, but it did feel like, as not strictly nonfiction, a rather poor choice, in my opinion, that pulls the energy away from the history that is being highlighted. But yeah, this book definitely does not fall into that trap. Sexuality and gender outside the bar binary was definitely not a focus of the book, but things felt a bit more balanced, if still binary. Race is obviously a focus of the book, and class also felt like it was highlighted in some important ways. Namely, there's at least one part where a poorer colonizer is talking about going out to work with the richer colonizers against the black resistors, and his mother points out that he will never be part of the rich colonizer class, in so many words. I might have missed something, but I didn't really catch on to any inclusion of the reality of bodies, namely disability representation. So yeah, to conclude, I actually feel this is a book I need to purchase because it feels like the kind of book that could offer many new things over any number of rereads. Initially a bit confused, I definitely found my pace with the book and it felt like I followed it fairly well, but there feels like there is more to be leaned. 
I was a little bit surprised to read the authors afterward and find Desolesh comment that this wasn't the first graphic novel to cover, cover Palmaris. He then listed a couple of other comics that my edition translated as Zumbi of Palmaris, Zumbi the Saga of Palmaris, and the Palmaris War. Doing a limited amount of poking around on the interwebs, however, seems to indicate that these titles are not yet available in English, so I'll have to wait in anticipation for these or other titles that highlight this particular and other communities of black people across the so-called Americas. Another book I like to hype whenever we are talking about this history is of course Maroon Comics. Link in the cards to my review and flip through. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.